Clap our hands unto the Lord and praise Him. He's a good God. Oh, He's a good God. We have many needs tonight. Mrs. Palacios needs a healing. Charles Olivo family, it's a man that I worked with, came home Sunday and he had a massive heart attack and, and died that early that morning. And the family needs prayer. Touch Brother Andrews tonight, kidney stones. Needs a touch in his body. Sister Dorothy and Sister Evelyn, Evelyn needs a healing. The Plaisance family, salvation, healing, and special needs. And pray for our pastor. He will be leaving around 11 o'clock tonight, leaving the Philippines. So keep his hand on him as he's coming back home. Sister Brenda, Brother Rusty, God knows. And God knows we have been praying. And I believe that God will hear and answer our prayer. Anybody else have any needs? Raise your hand signifying that need unto the Lord tonight. Let's go to prayer right now. God, we love you. We praise you, Jesus. God, you're so good to us. You're here. Let's clap our hands and let's just praise him, thanking him for meeting those needs because we know that he will hear and answer prayer. Good to have our guest here tonight. I do not have a list of visitors' names, but let's give our visitors a good hand clap. Thank them for coming tonight. Daniel was a man of prayer. The Bible says that he prayed three times a day. And he was looking for an answer. And the angel of the Lord finally came. He told him, he said, from the first time you've prayed, I've heard you. But the prince and power of the air he delayed me a little bit. It was a battle. You read in the book of Revelation, it says that Michael and his angels was at war with Satan and his angels. And Satan and his angels prevailed not against Michael and his angels. There's always war between Good or truth and evil. And we're praying and we're looking for an answer. And every time that we pray to God, there's a devil that's trying to hinder God moving and answering. But I'm here tonight to tell somebody that we're going to prevail against him. And not to quit praying if you don't hear, see the result or get the answer the first time. Pray again. Because God hears and answers prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It has a lot of production if you'll just keep praying. Now, don't let the block of the enemy or the block of an answer stop you from praying again. Now, you trouble God like that woman with the unjust judge until he does something for you. God's going to move if you'll just keep being faithful and praying. I don't believe that God is not deaf in what we are saying about Sister Brenda. 
I don't believe God's got his ears plugged when we're what we're saying and praying about to him uh, about for Brother Rusty, but I believe God knows uh, exactly where they're at uh, and what they need. Uh, and in due season, he's going to move. Uh, and the answer's not going to be just in the nick of time. It's not going to be early. It's not going to be late. Uh, it's going to be at the providential time uh, that God has sent it. Uh, and God's going to answer us. Uh, keep praying. I know I'm not supposed to preach tonight, but I'm telling you that prayer works. I've seen it work. I've seen it when it looked dark and I fell at the end of my bed with tears in my eyes and I said, God help me. And in less than a month, God answered what I was praying to him about. I just got to keep going to the throne of God. Let's lift our hands and praise him one more time and thank him for he is a God that hears and answers prayer. Let's worship the Lord as Sister Sanja sings to us tonight. Come on, let's worship. Well, you can't tell me God won't make a way for you. Won't make 
make a way for you You can't tell me He won't see it through I know He can I know He can I know He will I know He will Yes, I know He will Hallelujah I've seen Him do it too many times before He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Fear not, little children, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Healing is in that kingdom. Deliverance is in that kingdom. Salvation is in that kingdom. Restoration is in that kingdom. Revival is in that kingdom. He wants to give it to us. Let's clap our hands and shout it to the Lord. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, your presence is surely in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's worship our way back to our seats. Building fun night. Let's worship the Lord in our giving. Brother Addison, join us on the Join me on the platform. Ready? Go ahead. Victory is mine. hands one more time unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And you may be seated. Our pastor's absent. We miss him dearly. Brother Kellum's absent. I don't know about the rest of y'all. I miss him dearly. Brother Andrews is out. I miss him dearly. What's that? But yeah, I had to put the third string in. Whew. Sometimes I feel like just backing up and punting. Praise God. Anybody got a testimony tonight? Yes, sir. It was 
Brother Mark Batterton. Praise the Lord, church. Man, I'm excited about living for God, Brother Spence. You know, there is nothing like a Tuesday night service in a real apostolic church. You know, it seemed like, you know, we got brothers worked hard today. We got sisters that worked hard, but God's able. You know, one touch of his mighty hand can change his whole service. Uh, it can move for us. You know, it can make a difference beyond what we think or understand. <laughs> Now unto him that's able, I know you've quoted, to do exceeding abundantly beyond what we could think or ask according to the power that worketh in us. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got that power. You just got to turn it loose. You just got to let God work for us right now. I'm excited about God. It's time for revival, Brother Spence. It's time for revival in apostolic, right here in apostolic tabernacle. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have your way tonight, God. I love the Lord tonight, and I just want to thank him for keeping me safe on my cruise because y'all know I'm a bit dramatic, and I was quite scared of sinking. But the Lord kept his hand on me the whole time, and I did not get eaten by any shark. So thank the Lord. <laughs> I thank God for the Holy Ghost and all he's done for me. I thank God for my place and seat in the house of God. Um, this may not make any sense, but um, first of all, I want to thank God. Um, a few Sundays ago, one of the oldest uh, kiddos that come on the bus quoted, he's done it two Sundays in a row, quoted his 10 scriptures, like all 10 of them. And um, I just want to thank God for that, even when we don't see it, he's working. Um, because it's not just those 10 scriptures, it's about those 10 scriptures and what those scriptures mean. Um, and I remember like being young and being in Sunday school and memorizing those 10 scriptures, and I still know those 10 scriptures. They stick with you, even though um, you may not quote them all the time, and sometimes you'll hear somebody quoting them and you'll hear one of the kids like quoting right behind them. And that just, like it's getting and you don't always see it, but when you don't think they're paying attention, sometimes they're paying attention, just thank God for that. But um, the other night I was, this part may not make any sense to anybody else. Um, the other night we were, I was vacuuming and I was texting Hannah and I said, man, why does the sanctuary have to be so big? Because when there's nobody in here and you're vacuuming the whole sanctuary, it feels really, pretty, um, pretty big. But anyway, she said, I don't know, you'll have to ask your pastor. And I said something about a vision. And then it just, it got me to thinking um, about the vision that started this place. And sometimes we look around and see that it's a really big place and there's a lot of empty seats. And we just have to remember that it started out as a vision. Um, the couch had a vision of a full house. And sometimes we tend to um, forget that and or get sidetracked and stuff, and just forget why we do stuff, do what we do, and I just want to remember it's something about a vision, that that vision is still there, and we're believing God that one day that vision is going to come to life. Well, I love the Lord, and he's been so good to me, and I just never want to fail to give him thanks and praise. We've been praying about a certain situation for a little while now, and some things happened over this weekend, and God just moved and worked it out, and I know he's not done, and he's still working, and I'm just going to thank him for the complete miracle that he's going to do. Lord, thank you for, Lord, thank you for Mario getting to come back safe. Thank you for Papa having a safe in the Philippines. Amen. Yeah. First off, Brother Hassan, don't worry, I'm not going to pull the Brother Spence on you, so you'll get to preach. Uh, but when God does big things, we need to give Him glory. And when He does little things, we still need to give Him praise. And uh, a couple, three weeks ago or so, me and my family was going to town. My wife was driving. And, you know, this is no comment on women drivers. But uh, we was on New Zion Road, and we was real close to town to uh, Highway 4 when 
not too far from Sister Precious's house, a herd of deer ran out towards us. And it was about five or six deer. I don't know how many. They went by pretty fast. But I happened to be, you know, Alicia's watching the road. I happened to be looking at her talking because, you know, if I'm not at work, I'm not driving. But I told her, you know, watch out. There comes some deer. And she slammed on her brakes. And some deer went by. And she went to speed up. And another one ran right into us. And it put a big old dent in the side of our bumper. And, you know, of course, dealing with insurance, you know, nobody likes doing that. But, I mean, God can work through an insurance agency. Uh, we made our claim. They was telling us, you know, no, you got to go take it to Columbia because this body shop's in our system program or whatever. And we'll arrange for a rental car to come get you. And we went through all that. And the rental car company said, no, we're not going to deliver there. You're going to have to come get it. You know, and you're going to have to, you know, they reserved it, but they don't pay for it. You know, well, what's the point in having insurance, right? But we ended up taking it to a body shop in town, and they worked up the estimate. The adjuster came out. That, or the guy took the picture and sent it to the adjuster. The adjuster made the claim that night, and just a few days later, we had to check. And thank God, you know, it, it looked bad. But I told Alicia, I said, you know, I think I can pop that out myself. And so now God's good. So I jacked that car up, and I took that tire off. And I took that wheel well liner off. I looked in there and I just pressed that plastic bumper and it popped right out. You know, so there's still a small dent in it and some deer fur, but we still got a check in the bank and the car looks good and it still drives. And so I just want to give God some praise for it. Well, on the way to work this morning, I was listening to 88 to cross, and they were saying something about, we're going to get rain today. So I got to work, and the principal was walking down the hall. I said, you realize three Fridays in a row that I work, it rained. And then this past Friday, it didn't rain. She said, oh, but they're going to make it up for today. I said, but God, God could keep that out of control. But it sprinkled a little bit on and off. Other than that, it was a beautiful day for me to do my work, and I thank God for his hands. I love the Lord tonight. He is a good God. And I just want to tell a little something that God's done. It may take me just a few minutes to get it out, and I'll try to hurry. But um, several months ago, I had testified about, you know, praying about witnessing to someone and how that God had put me in connection with this elderly couple. And this past Wednesday, you know, I'd been praying for a while. He's, all, he's you know, when I get on something that he don't, quite see it the way I do. He gets kind of quiet and he won't really talk very much for a few days, but then he always comes back. And um, so we've had quite a few conversations, but the wife has always kind of kept this shield, you know, very friendly, you know, but just kept that wall up there. And I've been praying. I just kept praying about it because I want to see these souls saved. Good people, just good people. And um, so I went in this past Wednesday and... Um, it was quite a traumatic time. Um, he was having some issues. And uh, so whenever I got there, I could tell he was not well. And uh, so I just whispered. I said, oh, Jesus, touch him. And so his wife worked with him a little bit. And finally, he just kind of perked up. And she looked up at me. And she said, well, that prayer worked. I said, well, prayer does work. And I said, if you don't mind, I said, would you mind if I, um, I said, I'm on a group text with a few ladies that sometimes we put prayer requests out. And I said, would you mind if I got them to pray? She said, oh, please, indeed, do it. And so I did. Well, just within a few minutes, she got a phone call and someone was wanting to know what was going on down there that um, they had been informed that he, the, this man was not well. And so, come to find out, it was Sister, <laughs> Sister Sanju was sitting with their friends. And so, she had mentioned it, and they prayed. And uh, the lady kind of got tickled. She said, well, the Pentecostals were ahead of the Methodists this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but 
anyways, it, it, a few minutes later, he went on to the back to lay down. He was, you know, not well. And uh, so she stayed back there for a little while, and then she come up front, and I asked, you know, I inquired, well, how is he? And she said, he's, he's, he's pretty weak, said he's cold. I'm back there holding his hands because he's trying to warm his hands up. And so I said, well, if there's anything I do, just let me know. She said, well, if I holler, if you hear a bell, you come running. I said, okay. And <clears throat> it wasn't but just a few minutes when she got back there. Next thing I heard was a holler and a bell ring. <laughs> so I took off running down the hall. And I got back there, and he had got himself in the shower because of the issues that he was having. And he became so weak, he fell. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? And she said, well, call 911. So I did. Well, after I got off the phone, she went back in there with him. And so I just kind of stayed in the room and I began to pray. Not real loud, but I just began to talk to God. And in a few minutes, she said, the problem has stopped. And um, she said, prayer's going up for you right now. Prayer's going up for you right now. And um, so in a few minutes, she asked me, could I come in there and help her? And so I did. Well, when I got in there and I knelt down, I just reached out and put my hand on him and began to pray for him. He was kind of coming in and out of it. And uh, so anyways, just to make a long story short, um, I got through praying, and she just sat there and listened, and I prayed for her too. <laughs> and she, I said, what else can I do? And when I got through, and she said, well, if you can go out and direct the ambulance people in here, you know, that would help. And I said, okay. So once they got there and they got ready to go, she sat down, and she looked at me, and she said, God had you here today because he knew I needed you. And I know that I'm nothing, but I know the prayers I've been praying. And so anyways, um, they brought him on through, and he was kind of still in and out of it, and he made the statement. He said, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I said, I said, yeah. I said, you're going to make it. I said, it's going to be all right. And so they got to the hospital. Well, I didn't know till today that, that very afternoon, the daughter called. I don't know her. And she called me, and she just emotionally wanted to thank me for what I had done for her parents. And I, so I didn't really know what all had been going on. Well, today I went over there and checked on him. And um, as soon as I come in, he looked at me, and he said, You, you laid your hands on me. And he said, do you know, when I was in that ER, they were telling me I wasn't going to make it. He said, but in my mind, I heard you praying, and I felt your hand on my back. And he said, God did it. God, God answered that prayer. And she would just begin to bubble up, you know, she, and she was like, yes. Yes, you know, and just really opened up to me. And I just want to thank God for that because I just believe God's work. And I know they're 85 years old, but that's not too old for God to save. And I'm just praying and I'm just believing God's going to bring them in and save them. And I want to thank him for it. Let's all stand. We do miss our pastor, Brother Couch. But we're so thankful for a good first lady. Great pastor's wife. I've said it before, but it's worthy to be said again. Behind every great man is a great woman pushing him forward to be better. And I believe that. I'm thankful for that. Well, you're ready to be preached to. I love Brother Addison. I don't, and this is honest, I don't think you're going to find a better man walking in shoe leather than Brother Addison. 
he is my friend and I know God's dealt with him today and and I know he's going to preach to us and I'm going to help him preach. Who's going to help him preach tonight? Let's welcome him and the Lord to this pulpit right now, Brother Addison. Praise the Lord. God is so good. I love my man of God. I truly love my man of God. I'm thankful for the things that he put in my heart, the teaching, the preaching that I've received. And um, it's been a privilege being here, um, being a part of this church. I love my church family. I love my church family. I love praying with my church family, praying for my church family. I just love being around. This is my family. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm around y'all more than I am my fam my family. Because when I'm at home, I'm just at home. I don't go nowhere but to bed. And, uh, and that's it. Go to work. I tell folks, they ask me, what do I do? I say, I go to work, go to church, and go home. That's it. That's all there is. And uh, they said, you don't do nothing? Nothing. I don't have no hobbies. Nothing. I love to come pray. It's about the only hobby that I got. I love to come and pray. And I um, love being at church. That's another hobby that I got. You know, I don't hunt. I don't fish. My grandma took the fishing out of me when I was a kid. She didn't know how to come home. When she took us fishing, she'd leave at dark, and we'd come home at dark. And I just grew up and said, forget fishing. And uh, then she, she'd catch all the fish, and then you'd have to clean them. Forget it. I'd rather go buy it. But I love church. I love being around the church. It's, 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 it's an honor to be here. It is an honor to be here. I got a testimony. I almost didn't make it tonight. I uh, was, was headed to work this morning and um, pulled over at the Mill Haven exit, exit to clock in and um, sitting at the stop sign and I saw the 18-wheeler and another vehicle coming and I looked, looked to my right and I, the 18-wheeler, I thought, I thought the 18-wheeler was getting on the on-ramp and I looked to my left and another truck was coming, but it was way off. And so I was like, I can beat that truck and this 18-wheeler is turning off. And, um, and I pulled out, pulled out, and right here was the 18-wheeler laying on his horn. And, uh, but I thank God for keeping his hands on me. Again, God's been good to this old boy. Thank God for it. I thank God for it. I um uh, I um uh, talking to God. I thought I thought I was gonna preach something else. I got to coming home yesterday, on my way home yesterday, I got to feeling God, just got to feeling God and and I said, God, I'm not feeling what I got on my mind. I'm not feeling what I got on my mind. So I just started talking to God, just started reaching out to God and God laid a little something on my heart. If you have your Bibles. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter number 16, starting at verse 19. I came to prayer last night and I told God, I said, God, I said, God, I can preach on faith, God. I can preach about faith. And I quoted a scripture about faith. I said, God, but I'm not feeling to preach on faith. I said, I can preach on holiness. I can preach standards, God. I can preach on prayer, but I'm just not feeling it. And I just, I just got to talking to God, just, just kept talking to God last night. And God laid this on my heart yesterday evening on my way home from work. And I got to writing some stuff down. Luke chapter 16 and verse 19 says, I'm not there. It says, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gates, gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels 
Into Abraham's bosom, the rich man also died and was buried. Brother Spence, would you pray? God, you're marvelous. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to come before you. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here. Touch our minds. Let the anointing rest upon our hearts. We need you. Let him speak with an oracle of heaven. God, help him right now. Let the spirit of the Lord have his way. You may be seated. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into the place, this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father, <coughs> Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. I just come to preach for a little bit tonight, a glimpse into eternity. I uh, was praying and just talking to God and um, just got to thinking about my Sunday school class and, and, and um, these young people that's, that's been coming. And I, was talk I just got to talking to God about them, God. They need you. We need you in the church. We need a move of God. We need a touch from God. And I just begin to think, you know, so often the preacher come to church, he comes to the pulpit, and he, and he preaches on holiness, and he preaches on standards, and he preaches prayer, and he preaches on faith, and, and he get to where he just really can't focus on souls. His heart is wanting to reach souls. I know his mind is on reaching souls and affecting souls, but he's, he's doing his best trying to keep the church clean because there's so much going on in the church nowadays, so many things happening in the church. And I, and I just begin to say, God, he can't really focus on souls. But, you know, I, I've listened to my man of God, and I thought I've listened to my man of God preach, and in, in, in his way, you know, I've listened to him, and in the way he preaches, he inserts that thing about souls. He, he, he reaches for the lost while he's preaching to the church. I know there's a burden in his heart, and I know there's a burden in his soul for the lost, and I come tonight with a burden in my heart, and I want to reach for souls, don't 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 blame me. Don't don't look at me strange or look at me funny. I know it started off as a high service, and I was standing down there saying, "God, that's not in my heart tonight. That's not in my heart tonight. You got to help me tonight. You got to help me tonight, God, because souls are on. I always have souls on my mind, but I got a few souls." on my heart tonight. I got to teach it a little bit about hell in Sunday school uh, uh, last Sunday, well, Sunday before last, and I got to talking to them boys because it was just boys in there, and I got to talking about hell and telling them about eternity and how the devil want to use them, and I got on hell and got to talking about hell, and one of them said, can we talk about heaven? You know, and you can look in his eyes and tell that the fear of hell was in his eyes. 
and uh, they didn't want to hear too much about hell. But you know, nowadays, uh, nobody goes to hell uh, in this day and hour that we live. Uh, hey, every, you know, when you go to these denominational churches uh, or even when you go to the jail, uh, nobody goes to hell no more. Uh, everybody can do what they want to do uh, and live like they want to live uh, hey, and still go to heaven uh, because we serve a merciful God. I'm not preaching folks won't go to hell. I'm just telling you that's what's preached in this hour. I remember hearing on the radio one time, I was, I think I was going to work and uh, I was listening to the radio and um, this, this radio preacher said, you know, if, 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 if you do wrong and you sin, he said, you know, God won't send you to hell he said, you may not receive that reward that God promised you, but you won't go to hell. And I said, oh, God, that's a lie. That's a lie. But if I could tonight, let me focus on a lost soul or let me focus on somebody that may be cold and indifferent. Let me focus on somebody that may just come to church and just casually approach God or casually come to church and just really don't want to get in. They, they don't want to get out, but they don't want to get in. They just want to come because this is the thing to do. I was raised apostolic, so I got to go to church. I really don't want to just get in, and I really just don't want to get out because I hear so much about the world, and I see what the world is doing. I just don't want to go out there, but I don't want to just live for God. You know, and as I thought about this rich man, we really don't have a whole lot about this rich man's life. There's really nothing we just hear about. There was a certain rich man who, who, who dressed nice, who ate good, he lived good, he had good friends, I imagine. And I just began to think about this rich man. And I was like, you know, Jesus, when he talked to these folks, he was telling them about things they understood. And I said, God, I hope they don't count me wrong if I just take this rich man and put him in 2024 and use him for the 2024 hour and talk about this rich man and how we live in 2024 and how the world lives in 2024, you know, I don't know if this rich man ever went to church. We don't know. We don't know where this rich man come from. We don't know if he was just a rank sinner or he just, you know, he just was religious. We really don't know. But just let me put him in my turn. Just let me use my imagination and just say this rich man was, was, was just a rank sinner and didn't know God. He didn't know nothing about God, didn't want to know nothing about God, didn't care about God, but he had a witness laying at his gate. He had somebody there. We don't know much about Lazarus, not this Lazarus. We don't know much about him. But he had this man named Lazarus laying at his gate. And I just got to thinking about him, just, just thinking, maybe, maybe Lazarus, just, just, just he was a church man. He was a man that just loved God and he got down on, 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 in life and just couldn't really get around and got, got sick, real sick, laying at this rich man's gate, being a testimony to this rich man. And here it is, this rich man, I don't know, maybe he was a rank sinner, didn't care much for Lazarus, didn't care about this beggar man at his, at his gate, didn't want to do nothing for this beggar man, didn't even give him a crumb from his table. And here it is, the beggar dies and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And the Bible said in hell, he lifted up his eyes. And I just got to thinking about that. He lifted up his eyes in hell. You know, and then I got to thinking about maybe the rich man was a churchgoer. And he just, he just casually came to church. And somewhere in his life, he, he grew up and he just said, hey, I'm not going to go to church no more. I don't care about the preacher preaching to me. 
I don't want to hear it no more. I just want to go do my own thing. But the Bible said he died and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Whatever category you fit in, if you're not if you're not focused on God, if you don't want to live for God, if you don't want to love God, you'll end up like this rich man. And in hell, you'll lift up your eyes, being in torments. Hey, I come to tell somebody tonight that hell is not a fun place to go. Hell is not a place that you want to go and say, hey, that's a vacation spot that I want to be at. Hey, hell is not a place that you want to go when you leave this world. You don't want to be in hell because in hell there's torments in hell. This rich man, he was just in hell. And as I, and as, as I looked at this, you know, the Bible says it's a bottomless pit. You know, and I, I, in my mind, I can't fathom how he had the conversation with Abraham, and it's a bottomless pit. You know, but, but this man is in torments, and he's looking up, and he's seeing the glory world, something that he rejected in his life, something that he didn't want in his life. Maybe Lazarus was telling him, son, there's deliverance for you. There's a place of deliverance if you just turn to God. You can be delivered from the sin that you're living in. You can be delivered from whatever that you're doing in this life. And the rich man, no, sir, I don't want deliverance. I don't want to just really live for God. I don't want to do the things of God. You see, y'all church people. Y'all got a boring life. Y'all can't do nothing. You can't dress the way you want to dress. You can't go where you want to go. You can't live like you want to live. You got to live by rules and you got to live by restrictions. I don't want what you got. I just want to live my life. But in hell, in hell, when he lifted up his eyes and being in torments, he got to talking to Abraham, saying, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in what? Dip the tip. He didn't want his hand in the water. He just wanted the tip of his finger to touch the water, just to touch his tongue, to cool his tongue. He wanted deliverance when he got to hell. But hey, in hell, there's no deliverance. There's no place that you can be delivered. There's nobody that'll deliver you out of the flames of hell. Just giving you a glimpse of eternity, of what it's like to be without God. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Son, remember. Remember, son. You just remember all the messages that you heard. You remember all of the times that the Sunday school teacher said, hey, memorize this scripture, quote this scripture, say this scripture, repeat this after me, but no, you didn't want that. You remember, I didn't want that preacher. I didn't want that Sunday school teacher. I don't want to do that. I want to be with my friends. I want to hang out with my friends. I want to do my own thing. I want to get on my phone. I want to get on Facebook. Facebook. I want to do what I want to do. Hey, I don't want that. But in hell, you'll remember all the times that you had the opportunity to live for God. And that's going to torment you. That's going to war on you. That's going to wear. That's going to be a part of the torments because you're going to be thinking, I had an opportunity. I had a chance. And I passed it up. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it because I'm young. I'm young. I got my whole life ahead of me. I got fun that 
I can have parties, that I can go to friends, that I can hang out with. Hey, I come to tell you in hell, there are no parties. In hell, there are no friends. In hell, there is no Facebook. Hey, you're going to give it all up to go to hell, but you won't give it up just to live for God in this time and in this life. In hell, he lifted up his eyes. Abraham continued to talk to him and said, and beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. One of those young men, one of those young boys in Sunday school, I got to tell him, about heaven. I got to talking about heaven. And he said, what are we going to do? He said, what, 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 what you going to do in heaven? I said, man, I don't know. I ain't never been to heaven. I ain't never been to hell. I can't tell you. I said, but we got the story of hell. And I read that to him. And I said, uh, he said, well, what are we going to eat? I said, I have no clue. He said, I don't know. I said, maybe you'll eat manna. I said, I don't, I don't know what you're going to eat. He said, well, if there's nothing to do and nothing to eat, well, what's the reason to go to heaven? Well, so you don't go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. And uh, so they, they was ready to get off eternity. They was just ready to quit talking about eternity. And one of them asked a question. He said, well, can you get out of hell? Can you get out of hell? I said, no. And I read him that. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great goal fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. You know, when you get, when, if you go to hell, not when you go, but if you go to hell, if you go to hell, you're going to want somebody to pull you out of the flames. You're going to want somebody to come and witness to you. You're going to want somebody to come and tell you about Calvary. Tell you about the blood of Jesus. Tell you about the mercies of God. You're going to want somebody to come and talk to you about God one more time. Just give me one more opportunity. That's what this man was saying. Just one more chance. Oh, if you just give me one more chance, I'll do right. I'll live right. I'll pray right. I'll get right. I'll do what I got to do. Hey, I come to tell somebody if you go to hell. Ain't no getting out of hell. If you go to hell, mama can't help you. If you go to hell, daddy can't help you. Grandpa can't help you. Can nobody pray you out of hell? If you go to hell, you can't get out. There is no getting out of hell. You're going to want that deliverance. You're going to want it. You're going to want that deliverance. And this man said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would have sent him to my father's house. It's a drudgery to some people to pray. It's a hard thing for some to come and pray. I don't want to pray, preacher. I don't want to pray, mama. I don't want to pray, daddy. Or I'll just go through the motions. I'll make it look like I'm praying. I'll make them think that I'm praying. But I come to tell somebody in hell, you're going to pray. You're going to pray and hey, won't nobody have to tell you to lift up your voice? Won't nobody have to tell you to cry aloud? Won't nobody have to tell you to intercede when you if you go to hell? Nobody's going to have to tell you to call unto God in hell because in hell you're going to have the greatest prayer meeting that you ever had. You're going to have one of the best prayer meetings that you ever had, but there will be nobody to answer that prayer God won't hear you he won't come to your rescue then 
He won't come and say, well, son, I've been there all the time. No, you're going to remember I had the opportunity when I went to church. I had the privilege when I went to church. I could have prayed at the altar when I went to church. When I went to visit that church, they preached about prayer. And I should have prayed then. I should have got on my knees and cried before God. I should have called on God when I had the opportunity. Now I'm in hell and I need God. I need somebody to come pull me out of hell. I need somebody to reach for my soul. But now it's too late and I can't get nobody to answer me. I can't get an answer to my prayer. I passed it up when I was living. I had the opportunity when I was alive, but now I'm in this place called hell and I cannot get an answer. Isaiah 14 and 9 says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from the, their it has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Isaiah 5 and 14 says, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure in their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. Hell hath enlarged herself. A lot of intruders in hell. This rich man was an intruder. He was an intruder in hell. He went in there and it was not for him. It was not for him. When you, if you go to hell, you're going to hell as an intruder. You're going in there. <clears throat> hell was created for the devil and his angels. You know, somebody, somebody told me that, that they heard, one of, one of the Sunday school kids told me they heard somebody say that they want to go to hell because there's going to be a party in hell. There's not going to be a party. There's not going to be a party in hell. That won't, you, won't, you won't get to dress to impress in hell. You won't get to put on your makeup. You won't get to put on your, your hair. You won't get to do your shorts. You won't get to do none of that if you, when you go to hell. Somebody asked me, one of those boys asked me, he said, oh, you're going to feel it. I told him, yes, you're going to feel it. The rich man said, I'm tormented in this flame. I can feel the flames of hell as they reach around my body. I can feel the flames of hell as they touch my skin, as they touch me. But the thing about hell is you will never die again. You will never die. It's just an eternal pain. It's just a pain that will never, ever go away. But you got an opportunity tonight. You got an opportunity tonight. You don't have to go to hell. God does not send nobody to hell. You choose to go to hell. You choose hell for your eternal destiny. It's your choice. It's not God's. Because you see, God died for all. Jesus hung on that cross for all, red, yellow, black, and white, and brown. He died for all. He didn't leave not nobody out, not one nation, not one race, not rich or poor. He died for all. And the opportunity tonight is you can have it. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to die lost. You don't have to die without God. You don't have to miss out on heaven. It's your choice. You can choose to spend eternity with God in heaven. The choice is yours. Well, the walls are made of jasper. And the streets of pure gold. And the gates, every gate is made of one pearl. There are 12 gates and it's made of one pearl. Beautiful city. Beautiful city to go. And you can go there. 
I don't know what we're going to dine on, but the master has the table spread. Jesus said he got mansions prepared. I go to prepare a place for you. Hey, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I don't know what the mansions look like. I don't know what it's going to be like. There won't be no church building there. There won't be a place where you can go in because God and the lamb is going to be the temple thereof. You won't need no electricity because God and the lamb will be the light thereof. You won't need none of these amenities that we have on earth. You won't have to dress nice, Brother Isaiah, when you go to heaven, because God's going to give you a gown. Hey, he's going to give you a crown. God's going to dress you when you get to heaven. You don't have to go look in your closet and see what I'm wearing tonight. You don't have to go and look in the refrigerator and see what I'm going to eat tonight. Because when you get to heaven, God's going to take care of you. God's going to take care of you. God's going to robe you. God's going to be there for you. God's going to be right there with you. If you make it to heaven. I got to think about that song, Heaven. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I wouldn't miss it. Don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss heaven. I want to live this life. I know we go through battles. I know we fight this flesh. But hey, don't give in to it. Don't give in to this flesh or the desires of this flesh. They come every day. This flesh longs. It longs for the world. That's why we got an altar. So you can come lay that flesh down on the altar and get that man right and get that woman right because God, I don't want to go to hell. I heard a woman, she's backslid today. She used to tell me all the time, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell, but she let the troubles of her mind, the troubles in her home, her situations get the better of her. Hey, and now she's on her way to hell. Hey, she, she chose to walk out of the house of God because of the battles. I come to tell somebody, don't let the battles get you down. Don't let the battles get the best of you. Don't let the trials take you out. Hey, because heaven is a better place. It's worth every battle. It's worth every trial. It's worth every situation. It's worth every problem. It's worth every circumstance. Hey, it does not matter what you go through here. It'll be better over there. Because you'll be with God. God's going to be there. You won't have to worry about the devil ever again. Because if you read Revelations 20, he's cast into the lake of fire. And that's the last you ever hear about him. That's the last you ever hear about Satan. When God cast him into the lake of fire. You turn over to Revelations 21, no mention. It's all about God in heaven and the goodness of eternity. Let's all stand. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to be like the rich man. You don't have to reject God because you're young. You don't have to reject God because you're old. You don't have to turn away from God because of the trials, because of the battles you can endure. We got some that's been fighting for a while, a long while. Some since they were kids. And now they're older, way older, and they're still hanging in. They're still going through it. They're still saying heaven is worth it all, regardless of what I face, regardless of the battles in my body, regardless of the battles in my mind. Hey, if you look around, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses right here, right here. If you sit down and talk to some of them, they can tell you what they've been through. And they can tell you how God delivered them and how God brought them out. I'm going to tell you something. I, I, 
I guarantee you, you can sit down with Sister Couch and she can tell you stories of the move of God since she was a kid. And she can tell you how God delivered her and brought her out of many, many battles. And she's still in the fight because heaven is worth it all. She's got heaven on her mind. No turning back, no giving up. It's just me and you, God, regardless. I see the things to the side, but God, I got my eyes focused. And that's what we need to do. We need to fix our eyes on God. Hey, you know, if we don't forget that there's a hell, we won't backslide. If we keep it in our mind that there is a hell, and if I walk away from God, I'm going to hell. If that fear, Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. If we get that in our heart, and get a, get a, I said, God, you know, I've, I've never seen hell. I've never had a vision of hell. I've never had a glimpse of hell. But help me to get a revelation that there is a hell. Help me to keep that revelation in my heart that there is a hell. Because I don't, and, and I just do not want to go to hell. No matter what you go through, it's worth living for God. It's worth it, living for God. Don't throw in the towel now. Just keep going. Young man, young lady, just keep going. Keep, if, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need to get it. Because see, tomorrow is not promised to nobody. And like I told them, them Sunday school kids, 12 years old, and you know right and wrong, good and evil, you can go to hell. You can go to hell. 15 years old, you can die lost. Rejecting God, you can go to hell at 15 years old. It doesn't matter if you're in the church. You don't have the Holy Ghost. You don't have a prayer life. You don't have a walk with God. You can go to hell. I'm telling you, if we give it up, if we just throw in the towel, if we just say, you know, I just come and casually sit on a pew and go through the motions and be religious, we can go to hell. It's our choice. But we need to choose to live for God. Come on, church, these altars are open. Let's just talk to the Lord for a little while.
first got the Holy Ghost. My driving force was God, I don't want to go to hell. But as Brother Addison was preaching tonight, and he talked about you can be in the church, you can be going to church, you could you could have had received the Holy Ghost. And still go to hell. I fully believe that the majority of people that get the Holy Ghost is because they do not want to go to hell. But that drive and force of that can only keep you for so long. After I got the Holy Ghost, what's kept me in the church is my love for Him. And my desire to see Him. Young people, let this get a hold of your heart and let it drive you to an altar. But as he talked about tonight, let it keep you close to God and let you develop a relationship with him that'll keep you from now all the way to the Lord's coming. Can we just lift our hands one more time and just thank God for the word that we have heard I love you, Jesus. has definitely visited us tonight and helped us. Oh, I'm thankful, God. Do you love him tonight? <laughs> oh, the presence of the Lord is here. I don't know how to close this service. for our community and our state, our country, and our world. And while we're praying, uh, let's pray for Brother John Parks Jr. I don't know if it was mentioned over the weekend, but uh, he's had knee surgery and he needs a touch from the Lord and uh, just needs some help. God needs to touch him. Let's just pray right now. Lord, we love you. Thank you. 
Just clap our hands one more time and just thank God.